Mr. Smith. Mr. Larson, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, let me join with my colleague, Mr. Thompson, in applauding you for your convivial and congenial way that you always conduct these uh, hearings in the inclusive manner. And this has been a, a fascinating and interesting. Mr. Hayes, I appreciated your opening comment, not being a doctor, et cetera, but uh, uh, neither is Mr. Norquist, but uh, he just gave us a tour de force of what we need to know about uh, uh, economics. But let me start with FICA. What is that? Uh, Mr. Uh, Orbach? Well, the, uh, that is the uh, payroll tax. That oh, it's a tax? What's it called? Uh, I, I forget the federal, words behind the acronym. Is it Federal Insurance yeah. Contribution? Right. Who's? Well, it's, uh, it was established by the Social Security Act to uh, fund the Social Security system. At the time, there was no Medicare being funded by the payroll right. tax. So, yes, but it's, uh, in, it's often called an entitlement. Is it an entitlement? Or is that an actual earned benefit that people pay for? Well, it's actually somewhere in between. Really? It, Where's the in between? Well, it, because the benefits that people get uh, are related to the earnings on which they pay taxes, but only partially. And so it's. The other part is paid by who? Well, it's not so much that it's paid by whom, it's that there is redistribution within the system. Uh, earners who, who are in the higher end of the payroll, of the income, uh, labor income distribution. Uh, receive lower so it benefits. It was a way to balance out our capitalistic system after the Great Depression, it, and people saw what happened to individuals. And a way for us to make sure that in a system like ours, where we want to encourage people to go out and be entrepreneurial and invest, et cetera, then through no fault of their employees, when people fall through the cracks, that there was something there to protect and save them. When do you think the last time was Congress enhanced Social Security? Well, to you my knowledge, to my knowledge, Social Security hasn't really changed since 1983. Since 1971, actually, it did change. They did make some changes in '83, but they didn't enhance it. What they did is they moved to raise the age. And do you know how many people know that for every year you raise the age, that cuts your Social Security benefit by seven percent? So, and now we're taking great faith in the fact that we're living longer. So yeah, we're living longer and we're gonna live on less? 21% across the board cuts have been proposed by our colleagues on the other side in a system that hasn't been enhanced that preserves capitalism. How so? Well, first of all, where do people who get Social Security checks spend their money? Right back in their district right back in their home economy. And where are they, where do you find them on that scale? They are usually, for the most part, the most neediest in our society that have to do this. And we're proposing cutting these benefits from people, not enhancing them with money that they're gonna spend right back in the economy. We're also proposing in our bill to give 23 million Americans a tax cut. Why? Because we agree with what you say, especially when the poor people get it. They actually invest it right back in their community. What a great thing during this time of economic development and uncertainty after a pandemic and with regard to everything that's going on in the world as it relates to inflation. What a way for the little person to be able to help that. So now, Mr. Hayes, the fair tax I have to say, it doesn't look as though it's going to help out an individual on Social Security. So I wanted to ask Dr. Berman whether or not, and I'll give you the chance to respond, because uh, whether or not this, you know, what would the fair, how would the Social Security be replaced by the fair tax? What would it, do, how would you compensate for that? Uh, well, so, so uh, fair tax would be, like actually any consumption tax would be a, a big hit on retirees overall, although uh, those on Social Security would be better off because their, their benefits are adjusted for inflation. People close to retirement age could have a big hit because basically their real wages would go down. So the wage base on which their benefits are, are calculated would now be a lot less valuable. 
And Mr. Hayes, I took you sincerely. So how would you correct that? Well, first of all, would you end the Social Security program? Absolutely not. Okay. It's funded through the fair tax. When you look at the components of the 23%, which is the inclusive rate, like you do every other tax that you pass, right. what Wait you've minute, got is, that a tax is a, or is that an insurance policy, Social Security? It's, it's a policy that's been agreed upon. I am on it. I don't want to lose it. You may be on it or soon, and you don't want to lose it, and most of the people that get it need it. So there's no reason not to, and if you cut evasion, $542 billion of unreported income, the IRS says, and you look at how much that represents in income, say 10% tax, it's $5 trillion of income. What's 15% of $5 trillion when you had an $85 billion deficit last year? I know we just railed against the IRS, but they said in 2021 there's over a trillion dollars that goes uncollected from cheats. I believe it's more than that, but a IRS published 542 billion unreported income. It's in my report. Thank you. I'll, I, I'd like to talk with you further about that. I'll be happy to. I'd love to. Thank you, Mr. Chase.